It's Tuesday, October 25th, 2022, and today I am walking in the Acadia National Park's Seawall Campground for the first time since last spring. And the reason is the campground is now closed and I can walk in here without, uh, you know, bothering any campers. If we look here, they are working in here. There's some road equipment up there and here is the entrance station and came in a slightly different way than usual because they have the road torn up up there a little bit and you can't walk out in that way without having to work your way around where they have the entire road dug up so what we're going to do is walk down here past this roller and walk B loop, which is my favorite loop in here because it is the most forested. So, time to go for a little walk in Acadia National Park's Seawall Campground. Well, as we approach uh, B loop, there's this roller sitting here, and they clearly have dug a trench across the road. It looks like they put in a new culvert. And they'll probably be paving this soon. They must have had some issues with water over the road. Maybe the old culvert collapsed. And uh, they're clearly doing a fair amount of road work in here right now. So we'll go up and walk B loop. This loop has sites numbered 1 to 27 but there aren't 27 sites on the loop they are uh, they're actually about 25 I think because there are a couple of sites that simply don't exist and uh, if we consider a little bit past here D loop which is the walk-in camping loop is up here just to the left and a little bit further up we get to the amphitheater parking and access and then finally well back in the back is C loop which is the RV loop so let's go down B loop this is one of the two original camping loops in this campground these camping loops were built in the early 30s by the uh, Works Progress Administration in conjunction with Acadia National Park. Here is site 27, which is set well back from the road, although it is fairly close to the main road. I guess we'll go in numerical progression. We won't walk the wrong way. So here we go. Lots of leaves, so the road here could be a little slippery in places if you want to walk on the leaves. You see, it's quite a pleasant uh, camping loop. The sites that are missing from the numerical progression are on the far side of the loop, and I don't know why they're gone, although I think it may be related to adding some paths to the restrooms. That's just a guess though. Here's site number one, right up there. And site number two is on the other side. Now the loops in here uh, were originally set up as tent camping, which they pretty much still are, although if you had you know, a small trailer or a van, uh, you can come in here with that, but not all the sites can accommodate even a small trailer. Like site four here that would be hard put to accommodate even a typical class B. And here's one of the paths from this side that goes down to the restroom. You can just see the building over there. 
during the summer <coughs> these paths are covered with wood chips and they're currently completely covered with leaves okay here we go sites five and six a little bit bigger for five and six has got plenty of room you could back a small trailer in there although it might be a bit of a challenge to back it around that cedar tree uh, I this is my favorite loop to walk anyway and I think if I was to stay here in a tent because this is the most forested of the uh, camping loops and the sites are more spaced out here there are a number of sites where you could uh, be in your tent and not see your neighbors like site 8 here which is set back there quite a ways and uh, you wouldn't be able to see the neighbors at all so very nice camping in here and it's right across the road from another path over to the restroom this loop is also the closest loop to the ocean in fact although you might not be able to see it in the video if you look through the trees you can see some bright spots over there uh, in the distance and those are where the trees stop and the ocean begins so we're oh maybe 200 yards from the ocean at the closest point in this loop and it's an easy five minute walk over to the beach and we're now we've gone past site 13 and uh Site 14 is one of the sites that doesn't exist. Yeah. And here are sites, access to sites 15 and 16 off the same access. Back there. And you can really see the light through the trees. That is looking out over Seawall Pond right over there. Yeah. 17 another handicapped accessible site which is right next to a path up to the restroom you can hear lots of birds and you'll occasionally see deer and other wildlife in here such as squirrels And site 18 is also one that is not here anymore. I imagine it was when they originally platted this campground. Here's site 19 back there. And 20. That's 22. And way back there is site 21. So, and there's another water point right here. You don't have running water at your campsite, but none of them are very far from a faucet with potable water. And that one's quite nice back there. Let's walk back and take a look. The only difficulty with some of these sites of getting a small trailer in, and by small I mean under 20 feet, is that you would have to back around trees so and make a pretty sharp uh, turn to get in so here's site 20. Yep, well back in the woods i don't know why they have these uh, marks on some of the trees but they are there it's a nice little site and there's through the trees there you can see light that looks out across the seawall pond and then to the ocean so you're pretty close to the ocean here what a nice little campsite oops the site we were just in was site 21 <laughs> not 20. this is a very nice uh, pleasant place back here 
and I have walked through uh, this part of the park once in the summer and it was actually very quiet back here although you could hear the surf if it was up I'm just about finished with the loop here's site 26 another site that's set well back in there better part of a hundred feet from the road to the picnic table and these are relatively inexpensive uh, campsites I think the uh, rate is $30 a night unless you're 62 or older and have the senior pass in which case it's $15 you know, we're coming back to the end of the loop. So, although the sites are numbered 1 to 27, there are only 25 sites here. And here is the last site, number 27. Set well back and well away from any other campsites. The only negative to it, as far as I can see, is it's fairly close to the main road. Well, we decided to walk A loop as well. This is A loop. It starts right across from the uh, entrance station. And this one, like B loop, is primarily for tent camping, although there are a few sites in here where you could, you know, fit a very small under 20 foot uh, camping trailer and uh, have a much more private spot than you would down in the RV loop which is loop C now this entire area was the Dolliver family farm uh, back in the 1800s and the United States government, specifically the Navy Department, acquired the land in about 1919, except for a rectangle just past the back of this loop, and uh, built a U.S. Navy radio transmission station here that was connected to the uh, Navy radio reception station over on Otter Point uh, via an underwater cable. So this uh, and this Loop A was one of the first two loops built back in the 30s. So there's good separation of campsites in here too. Although the forest isn't as dense here as it is over on B Loop, some of the campsites are set pretty far back from the road. This is site six here. As you can see, it's quite a ways back there. And there's a restroom right across the road, as well as a water access point. Now one feature of this uh, loop is that when you get up here to about site 15, I think, or 16, the camping site is actually right next to a tiny little cemetery, which was the Dolliver Family Cemetery. And it's still there. The land it's on, along with several acres of land just past it, was acquired by the park in the 50s and that's where they built the walk-in camping area which is loop D which is the last camping area built in this campground so this campground is pretty old the main part of the campground is approaching 90 years old and the new part is around 70 years old and in terms of the uh, sites, locations, and spacings, that hasn't really changed. They have, you know, paved the roads, 
since then and uh, but the sites have stayed more or less the same probably they have newer picnic tables now though and this is the area sites 14 15 and then 16 where it's much more open and you can see they're pretty well set back from the road and site 16 is the one that is right next to the little cemetery now some people don't like the idea of camping next to a cemetery but all I can say is they're quiet neighbors I doubt they're gonna run a generator or play loud music in the middle of the night and right back there just before that gate on the right is site 16 and right at the gate is the access point to the cemetery and beyond that gate is one way of getting into the walk-in camping area and there are over a hundred campsites set into the woods there that you have to walk into from the road well I've uh, we've gone around the end of the loop it's at about site 21 or so I think there are 37 sites in here as I said like uh, B loop they're set pretty far back from the road and they're well separated see a couple sites here you could see the next site through the trees there but they're not right next to you so good site separation uh, and they're all an easy walk to the restroom and if you want to walk over to the beach from here eh, take you five minutes and you'd be right at the ocean in fact you can see how close it is see where the trees kind of go away over there uh, just past those trees there's a field and uh, fields about 150 feet across and then it's the ocean yeah, just about finished walking around a loop as we go in the traffic direction uh, you see the sites that are closest to the highway and the ocean off to my right and sites that are just in the woods although fairly close here to sites on the other side of the loop because we're right about at the end of the loop and there's another restroom this loop for 37 sites has two restrooms now these uh, restrooms are just restrooms they don't have showers or anything well here's site 37 I think there actually are 38 sites here so now one thing about this campground is that uh, for the last couple of years it's been reservation only you have to go online at recreation.gov make a reservation there's site 38 nice big site pretty isolated from other sites and uh, you can only reserve these at least for the last two years 60 days in advance and when I looked on recreation.gov a couple times this year uh, everything that was available got booked usually within the first 12 hours of availability so this is a very popular campground largely because these national park campgrounds give you good sized sites uh, and they're reasonably quiet and they're cheap particularly compared to the private campgrounds okay we're gonna finish walking back out to the car there's uh, some of the trucks and you can see a, a uh, an excavator working down there and a big pile of gravel on the road I imagine they're putting in another culvert down there so hope you enjoyed this walk around A and B loops in the Seawall Campground in Acadia National Park.
Oh, one other thing. The building over there with the red light is the bus stop for the Island Explorer free bus. That will take you to lots of places in the park. Okay, we're gonna walk out, finish off looking at the entrance station, which is uh, an old building built in the 30s by the Works Progress Administration and or the Civilian Conservation Corps. And, uh, you know, shows that style. For example, the stone chimney. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't, please consider subscribing to my channel. And thanks for watching.